And joining us now is Senator Matt Canavan. Matt, great to see you. Congratulations. Still in the Senate, still there, fighting hard, and a great night for the Nationals. Well, there's a lot to fight for, Rowan, and uh, it's a, it was a disappointing night, but I've woken up with a, uh, a positive step because we've got to fight back here, and uh, I'll be doing that in the Senate. Uh, you're right, the Nationals Party held every seat. Uh, it's a remarkable record. We have not lost a seat for 15 years. In fact, we picked up a seat over that period. I, don't, I can't find another lengthy period of a political party in government doing that. But I agree completely with what Rita said. Um, you know, we unfortunately have lost last night because we have forgotten the forgotten people. Uh, we, we forgot the quiet Australians. Uh, the electorate hasn't changed all that much in three years, but we did in the last three years. Uh, we adopted uh, a Liberal moderate platform on energy, on climate, uh, on the culture issues. And uh, that, that platform has failed. It's failed again. Uh, it failed in WA, it failed in South Australia, and it's failed nationally because, surprise, surprise, uh, when you take um, uh, a pale imitation of Labor's policies to an election, people go for the real deal. Exactly. Yes. And exactly. McDonald's can't sell health food and we're not <laughs> yeah. going to be able to sell socialist policies. That's well, not so uh, how what's going how to be the path to victory. So let's assume that Peter Dutton is the next leader. I said last week on this show that Peter Dutton and Matt Canavan should be the leaders of the... Uh, Opposition, if you went into opposition, but that's a different well, question. Well, Barnaby's done an excellent job. I mean, he's held all these seats. Good. Uh, I so, hope he stays around. It's up to him. But I Peter hope he Dutton around. and the Nats together. What can you do? And do the Nats, because you've done better than the Libs, do you get a larger slice of the cake in what's going ahead? Well, look, that's not my key consideration right now. I, I do feel for those uh, Liberal members who have lost their seats, and that we are in a in a, in, a, in a weaker position now because of that and, and it's an uphill battle to get back. But as I say, you know, I've woken up with a positive step of this frame of mind here and to all your viewers out there, the key thing now is to join the party. Get involved um, uh, because if you don't, you know, all of these lefties out in the media today will get their way and they'll continue to take the party down a surrender monkey approach which will not get us back to government. And even if it did, we'd just be a Labor government anyway, in name, you know, and we'd only be Liberal in name only. So join the party, get involved uh, and, and put some spine back into our political forces because the way back here is to get behind an agenda which is about low taxes, lower red tape, the family. We don't talk about the family anymore. We need to get back to that. That's, mm. that's what a core thing of what we should be about is, is, uh, is providing an environment to protect and, and, and allow families to thrive. There is a deep hunger out there in the electorate for such an agenda because the biggest, the reason there was so much disengagement in this campaign is the biggest issue for people is balancing their budgets around the kitchen table and neither side of politics really had a coherent response about how they're going to do that. You watch. The media the next week will be obsessed about climate change. They'll be totally <laughs> obsessed by it. And, and people out there uh, around the kitchen tables going, what the hell is going on in this country? I can't afford to pay for a tank of petrol right now. Exactly, James. Matt, did the Coalition miss a real opportunity? Did Scott Morrison miss a real opportunity to put nuclear on the table at this election or before this election when you did AUKUS to say we're going to have a nuclear defence industry, we should have a nuclear civilian capability? That's how we get to net zero, not this, oh, we'll do net zero too just a little bit later. Well, look, on the latter point first, I mean, our problem was... We effectively legitimised the green agenda. Totally. Because we signed up to the destination. I mean, you know, you can... Uh, uh, yeah, we were arguing that the timing needs to change, but effectively we're saying we should get to this net zero uplands um, just a little bit later. But if it's so good, why wouldn't we get there sooner? Exactly. <laughs> so it, it was completely incoherent. And, and look, I, I, on the nuclear question, I mean, we can all play uh, uh, Monday experts now... Uh, but the core issue, I thought, is we unfortunately lapsed into making this a personality contest because we didn't put policy ideas on the table. But that would have so, been, so, yeah, been an option. Yeah, would have been an option. Nuclear would have been an option. But, look, I, I, there's lots of options. But we did not take a suite of policies to this election. We tried to make it about Albo. And uh, 12 months ago, that might have worked. But personality politics is very fickle. And uh, I think a little bit unfairly. I don't think Scott Morrison really did anything to deserve the vitriol that was, a, was a, a leashed on him. But, but that's, that's politics. It happened very quickly and we were on the wrong end of that. But, but again, you're, say, you're saying Monday morning experts, but lots of us were talking about nuclear oh, long look, ago. So it's it not, this yeah. is not no, a new I get thing. That, I get but, that. but, but um, you know, Barnaby Joyce committed to net zero. Uh, whether you agree or not, 
I, I suspect you were not happy with that decision. You think? Now, Barnaby, <laughs> Bar <laughs> Barnaby Joyce gave that reason as being because you've got to be in government to make changes. You've had, you're have had you in government for six months under that. I don't see anything that came well, out of that. I... Now you're in opposition. So what should the Nats be doing differently? Should a, a Dutton-led coalition be abandoning net zero? Well, I think so, Rowan. I, I mean, I was against it. And... And, and, and it, what Barnaby did was let the party room decide, which is the right thing. There wasn't really a proper dis debate about net zero in the joint party room or in the Liberal party room, which is, I think was a failing. But we did have that debate in the Nationals party room and, and the majority did agree, although the, um, that was done under the context that the coalition would be blown up unless we agreed to net zero. So there was a bit of a, a threat there. But look, I, I think we do need to reconsider these things. Uh, uh, I mean, we are going down a path here in the Western world where we've been seeing higher food prices, higher energy prices, directly as a result of net zero, if you like, ESG policies. And as I often say, ESG, it stands for extreme shortages guaranteed. <laughs> and that's what it is. And that's what we're seeing. And what we should get back to is supporting policies. I mean, net zero is a label. We should support policies that seek to have energy abundance in this country so we can dominate on energy, we can have surpluses of energy, we can have lower prices, we can have cheaper food prices. And so families... Uh, can actually survive uh, in our country and we can have a lot of wealth and jobs as well. They're the policies we should adopt and put Australia first in those discussions, not be led by the global agreements and uh, whatever uh, the current elite um, uh, thinking is overseas. Is Peter Duncan your next leader? Well, look, that's a matter for the Liberal Party. I'm not in the Liberal Party. Um, is your next leader? Yeah, look, I, I mean, there's... That's a yes. We'll take I think, yes yeah, look, I think that's probably... Look, I hope so. I hope, I hope <laughs> now, he decides... Now, Matt, just it. very quickly, you're a great man with the acronyms. You've got an acronym for this uh, new <laughs> government. Tell well, it. Well, look, the other thing here tonight is let's keep in mind, as I say, I've woken up with a positive frame of mind because this Labor government that's been elected has been elected on the lowest primary vote the Labor Party has ever received since 1910. Yeah. Right? So this is... They're going into government. Yeah. And so they've Clay been elected. Clayton's now, Labor they're going government. to be beholden to the Teals, to the left... Uh, in the Senate to the Greens. So it's going to be a Labor, Green, Bant, Teal government and LGBT government. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, On that and, note. And, and you go woke, you go broke. So let's just sit back and get the You're popcorn wrong, Matt, Matt Canavan, thanks so much. Thanks for coming on. Great to keep you there in the Parliament and we hope to see lots more of you on Outsiders because Outsiders, Matt, is where the fight back is going to happen. Yeah. And we're going to fight back.